Man, what up? Kathy Wood, thank you for getting on. Thank you for connecting me with Kelsey. Bina, what up? JJ was good. Last. Appreciate the appreciate the merch. Thanks, Bean. Kelsey, I see you. Welcome to episode 82 of the Positive Impact Podcast, where we talk about all topics relevant to the game I love. I am your host, Terrell Dozier, and tonight's episode is powered by Concrete Paper. Go support Concrete Paper on Instagram. Appreciate my man, Phil Johnson, for the merch. Tonight's guest, super excited to talk to this young lady. I uh, met this young lady some years ago. She played in my All-Star game, is now up at Sacred Heart University doing wonderful things. Please welcome to the Positive Impact Podcast, Miss Kelsey Wood. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How's everything going at school? It's going good. So far, good. so good. I mean, we good. started actual school like a month ago, so it's going good so far. Good, good. I appreciate yeah. you getting on here with me and, and spending some time with the old guy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So, you know, I want to start off with, you know, um, and go backwards a little bit and talk about 2020. What a crazy year 2020 was. Talk about what you learned personally from 2020. I mean, I've learned a lot, um, both, you know, mentally. I mean, mentally, 2020 has been challenging. Mm -hmm. I think, like, you know, how it's, it's been for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I... I learned how to get through it. I learned how to accept help from people when I needed it. Um, but, you know, we all got through it, so I can't complain. I mean, I'm having a great time here, so there's really nothing I can complain about. Absolutely. And you talked about, you talked about pushing through. So, you know, was that, also, that, was that always something that you did naturally, or is that something you kind of learned, like, going through this? Like, I really have no choice but to keep going. Is that something that always came naturally to you? Um. Not naturally, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, it's it's a hard lesson to learn to keep pushing through without letting things affect you. Mm -hmm. um, I think as I started to mature more, I learned my lesson. Um, but, I mean, definitely this year I've matured more than I have in the past years. Um, I push through things now without complaints. I try not to complain. You know, I'm alive. I'm healthy. So, I mean, this year it's definitely been a push for everything, school, basketball, Right. just everything in general but it definitely takes some maturity um but i've i've gotten there sometime this year sometime this year i had a girl listen yeah. speaking like you growing up i love it <laughs> i love it i love it yeah. so grew up in wine skill new york mm -hmm. come from a very athletic family mom played volleyball in college you got mm -hmm. you and you and your sisters very athletic in my in my opinion, and I don't want to offend anybody in Avril Park, but to me, the first family of sport athletics in at Avril Park. So, talk about what it was like growing up in in such an athletic household. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. I wouldn't trade it for the world, obviously. Um, you know, my oldest sister Caroline played softball. 
So I would go to all of her games with all my other sisters. You know, we were little at that time. Um, we grew up on the softball field, and then we pursued basketball more. Um, my other older sister, Mallory, pursued basketball more than any other sport. So I kind of followed her lead with that. Um, so, I mean, we grew up on the field. We literally grew up on the court. We were never home. We were in different states traveling. So it's just, it's my nature. You know, it's how I grew up. It's what I followed after my siblings who are amazing athletes. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically my life. Right. No question yeah. about it. So in that household, like, what were, like, were there in-house battles? Like, what were the battles? Like, were there some, like, one-on-one -on -one games? Like, talk about, like, the battles with your, you know, with your sisters. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely battles. Um, it was more, like, so me and my older sister, Mallory, me and my younger sister, Amelia, all played varsity at one point together. Ooh. Those practices were rough. Um yeah. We had some battles and practices. We yelled back and forth, you know. Yeah. Our coaches had to tell us to, like, you know, relax. Like, we, we understand your siblings, like, don't go for each other's throats. There were definitely moments like that. And sometimes it was brought home, you know, we would complain, but we all got over it. We're all fine. But, I mean, one-on-ones, we have a basketball court in our driveway. We would always play. Like, always. We're always out there. Caroline would even play with us sometimes. It's, right. it's always a battle between us, but... It's a, it's a good battle. Like, it's how I grew up. They push me to be my best. I push them to be their best. Absolutely, man. God bless you guys. So if you can go back for a second and tell me about your first memory with the game of basketball. Do you remember your first memory with the game of basketball? First memory would probably be hoop camp when I was younger, Avril Park hoop camp. Um, it was more just like, you know, I was still figuring out what sport I wanted to play because I still, I honestly pursued softball first than basketball. And then I kind of found out, you know, softball wasn't for me. So I went to basketball. But my first memory is definitely like hoop camp. Um, I fell in love with the game. Um, and it's like, I was like, I don't know, five or six. And I just knew that I loved it. But I did try other sports, but nothing ever compared to basketball. And then at what age did you feel like, I think I can do this for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I have a future in this game. Like, was there a moment? Was there at a certain age? Was it in a certain game? Like, at what moment did you realize, like, you know, I, I think I can really do this for sure? Yeah. I mean, as, like, a younger kid, it's always, like, a dream to go to the next level. But at my, like, real, like, oh, crap moment, like, I can actually do this was my sophomore year. Um, I was playing for New York Havoc. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, one of my first years I was actually getting looked at by colleges. Like, even if it was just, like, you know, I would get, like, the um, letters in the mail. You know, they didn't mean that much. The coaches weren't calling me. But, I mean, I got, like, letters from colleges. And I was like, wow, like, they kind of know who I am. Like, yeah. you know, maybe I can pursue this. So it was definitely my sophomore year where I was like, all right, like, you know, I got to work if I want to do this. But I definitely, like, knew at that moment I was like, I can do this. Right. Nah, no question yeah. about it. So, Class A, Section 2, girls basketball, you could pretty much pencil in Avril Park as Section 2 champions. You personally, a member of five mm -hmm. Class A, Section 2 champions there. Take me through your years, right? Because you came up very, very young. You talked about playing with your older sister, right? Mm -hmm. And then just your younger sister coming up after you and everything. So talk about what was it like when you first moved up to varsity in your younger years and what your role was. And then take me through your senior year. So I was on varsity as an eighth grader. So I was young, obviously terrified. Yeah. Um, you know, my head coach, Coach Oregon, he's, he was a scary person at that yeah. time. You know, he's, he's big, his voice is deep, he yells a lot. So I'm not, I was terrified as an eighth grader, like absolutely terrified. Um, but it was the older kids that helped me through it. You know, Sam Larangel, the one senior, she really helped me through it. She was still, I think to this day, one of the best guards I've ever played with. Mm -hmm. um, she like, she was like my rock at that time. Um, I played in eighth grade. You know, I actually started some games. I got some minutes in, which I think was good. Um, and then after my eighth grade year, you know, ninth grade, I kind of eased myself into there a little bit better. Um, but I was still young. I was still growing, obviously. You know, I was still goofy. Couldn't really run that well. Like, 
going like through the years, obviously I got more athletic and like more used to like the speed of the game. But I mean, you know, my first couple of years, it was like the goofy, like young kid. Like I was known as that. Um, you know, freshman year, it was fine. It was fun. Again, older kids took me under their wing, helped me out. Sophomore year, I think, is really when I started to, like, pick up and grow into my body more and, like, learn how to control myself better. Mm -hmm. um, sophomore year and junior year, that's kind of when I, like, really started to pick up my game more. Mm -hmm. um, actually become, like, you know, a good basketball player, work on my skills, you know, not just post skills, sometimes guard skills, too. Yeah. Um, my junior year, I think, was my biggest year for me. Um, I really think that's when I grew out of my shell from being my younger self and really, like, showed what I can do mm -hmm. and I think I did that my senior year too but for me my junior year meant a lot like I hit my thousand point my junior year which was huge mm -hmm. um that's when I committed to Sacred Heart too mm -hmm. so it was more just like maturing and you know it's younger kids who are out there playing it takes time like it takes mm -hmm. a lot of time I'm still not the best player I can be right now I still mm -hmm. have years to grow mm -hmm. so hopefully I keep growing Nah, I'm sure. I'm sure you definitely will. And you know, you talked about scoring your thousand point, and you know, and you talked about all the things that you've learned through the years. That you know, honestly, like you know, you play for championships, right? And it was like it felt good to win, like a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I want you to take me out of section two for a little bit, and and I want you to talk about traveling in the spring and the summertime, right? Because a lot of kids kind of feel like you know, okay, you kind of do what you got to do during the high school season. But mm -hmm. for me, it's really about what I go and play on this circuit. So talk about the jump from section two to some of the girls that you were playing nationally playing with Havoc. Yeah, I mean, the jump is huge. Obviously, kids that play in section two, you know, some of them basketball isn't their first choice. They mm -hmm. just, you know, are on it for a team. They're not going to play for college or just like on a team. Mm -hmm. So going from that to AU where you travel and you play big players, you play people who love basketball just as much as you, you play people whose skill level are better than you. Um, it's, it's a big jump. It's a lot of commitment. It takes a lot out of you, but I mean, if you love the game and you want to go to the next level, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes a lot, but if, if you're meant for it, you can do it. So, Tell me about a game, right? So first, this is a two-part question. So take me to the first game that you were like, yo, this girl is really, really big, or this girl is, like, really, really good. Like, was there that moment? And then was there another moment where you played A, you was like, yo, I can pretty much hang with a lot of these girls. Like, I'm pretty special, too. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't really a game where I realized it. It was mm -hmm. actually one of my first... AU practices with Havoc. I was young. Um, it was like the team with like Shyla, mm -hmm. Chloe, all of them. Um, I was new to the program, so I was terrified. Mm -hmm. um, it was scary. You know, they're amazing players. I played with amazing people. Um, at that point, you know, jumping in that young with players who have more experience and who are older, it kind of gets to your head. You're like, I don't know if I can hang with them. I don't know if, you know, I'm as good as them. But then you also have to realize you're three years younger than them. They have three years more experience than you. So hopefully, you know, you'll get to that point, which it was hard for me in the beginning to realize that because I've always been used to playing up in age. Um, I always played up. Even with Havoc, I got pulled up to the blue team pretty young. Um, I played with, like, amazing players. They, I definitely would not be where I am right now without playing with them. Um, so I think that was the moment. The first practice, I was terrified. I didn't know if I could hang with them, but I also, it was my mom that told me that too. She's like, you know, they're older than you. You're on the younger team because Havoc, you practice basically like eighth grade through 11th grade, which is tough, but it makes you grow. It pushes you to what you have to do. So I think that was the kind of the moment where I was like, oh crap, like, I don't know. But, you know, obviously I grew out of it. You know, I became one of the older people helping the younger people that helped them realize it. So, Yeah. It worked out. It worked it out. Did. It did. So, so I never, you know, I never, honestly, like, you know, in my time of living upstate, I've never been to Ava Park before. You know, I just know, like, the teams are, like, really, really good. So, mm -hmm. you know, I remember when you came to, you know, play in my All-Star game. And I remember after that All-Star game that, and even during the game, 
we all felt and we were just all talking about like listen man if anybody misses a shot this child is going to get the rebound like you know what i'm saying like I, I i really never seen a girl gravitate to a ball and mm -hmm. almost to me like took pride in in grabbing rebounds like you did at that time mm -hmm. and so i don't know if that's accurate about you but like talk about your aggressiveness when it came to rebounding because that's the part that's always stuck out to me about your game which means a lot to me because you know to me that is my game you know it's something that not a lot of people take pride in but i mean it's it's what i do i don't know why you know it's not like all like i don't know it just kind of came naturally like it's hard to explain but rebounding is my game like it's what i do um it's basically you know not it's like why sacred heart wanted me so bad mm -hmm. but you know, I, I take pride in rebounding. I think it's one of the most, like, you have to hustle for a rebound. And I'm not even playing with Division One. I'm a small post. Right. But I still, you know, get in their battle. You have to rebound. You can't score without rebounding. I think that's where it started for me. You know, I start with rebounding, push up the court to score. Um, but I'm glad that you noticed that because rebounding is <laughs> that's my game. Nah, rebounding was my game, too. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I, I gravitate towards players that way. So, you know, there's a lot of players that can score, right? There's a lot of players that can handle. There's a lot of players that can shoot. But there's not a lot of players that want to do that, right? Because that takes a lot of effort. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Setting screens, getting rebounds, diving on the floor. That stuff takes effort. Mm -hmm. But what you've learned, right, and what you kind of figured out at an early age is that's what also keeps you on the floor, right? Because yeah. a shooter can have an off-night shooting, right? A, a good ball handler can get bottled up by a good defender, right? And you just have off games. Mm -hmm. But nobody, right? Your effort is your effort. You understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. what keeps you on the floor, right? So at Averill Park, right, regardless of what you did, you were going to play about 30, 32 minutes a night. It didn't really, yeah. didn't really matter, right? Like, because we need KK to win a basketball game, right? But now probably what you're finding out, right, as when you played with Havoc, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. on a higher level, and now at Sacred Heart, like, that's what keeps you on the floor, right? Because we know that we can pencil her in for effort and rebounding. So kudos to you for, for figuring that out at an early age. And, and I've, I've never forgot that. And I'm proud that you still continue to do that even on this level. Thank you. That means a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go back to Havoc for a second. And let's talk about, you know, being recruited and what the recruiting um, process was like for you like how was that like was it overwhelming like you said you committed your junior year like you couldn't wait like it was a thing like I can't wait to get this over with because it's too much like talk about the recruiting process yeah um it's stressful I'm not gonna lie it's extremely overwhelming um but I wouldn't have traded it for the world whatsoever you know the amount of people that you get to talk to the amount of things that you learn from different coaches um, to me, it kind of made me realize who I am as a person, you know, who I click with, who I want to be around, what kind of area I want to live in. Um, but I mean, the recruiting process, it's nonstop phone calls, nonstop texts, you know, you have to answer, you have to call back, it could be an hour on the phone, it could be five minutes on the phone, you never know. Um, the emails you have to send out for like AU tournaments to tell coaches where your games are, the exact time. I mean, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, which I don't think many kids understand until they actually go through the process, which I didn't understand until I went through the process. I had no idea how much time and effort it would take. But once again, it's all worth it in the end. You know, you have to do what you have to do. You may not like it. You may not want to do it. But if you want to get to the level that you're aiming for, you have to go through all of it. You just have to. No question about it. Yeah. So what did your what did your choices come down to? Where did you where did you take visits at? And ultimately why did you choose Sacred Heart? So my top two were Manhattan and Sacred Heart. Um I was going back and forth between them. Um I visited let me think. Manhattan was one of the first ones I visited. I went to Lehigh, um, Lafayette, Sacred Heart. There are some more, but those were like my top ones. Mm -hmm. Um um, as soon as I stepped onto Sacred Heart and met the coaches and players here, I literally knew. Like, it was like a kind of just like, you know, I fell in love. Mm -hmm. And 
I actually, I went up to my AU coach, Terrence, and told him I wanted to commit. And he was like, give it some time. Like, you're young. Like, you're going to have other looks. Go visit other colleges. I was like, okay, okay. But, like, I had Sacred Heart in my mind. I was like, I don't care what other, I don't care who contacts me, who calls me. I'm going to Sacred Heart. So I gave it, like, a month or two. And then I got some more, like, calls. I went to other colleges, but I could not get Sacred Heart out of my head. I was like, it was just, like, the place I felt at home, the place that felt like a family to me. So I went up to him and I was like, you know, I'm committing. This is where I want to go. I want to go here. And he was like, yeah, I kind of knew that. Right. Yeah. So that's, I fell in love with it here instantly. I mean, it's the perfect choice. Absolutely. Like looking back at it now, I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. Absolutely. Now that's beautiful. So I'm a big, I'm a big advocate. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a big advocate for student athletes. And, you know, I love, I love the process, right? And because it's growing, it's the next four years of your life. It's probably one of the first big decisions that you had to make in your young life, right? Because this is four years. Like if I choose the wrong school, now I'm unhappy, you know, am I looking to transfer? So it's so important that you love the school. And I tell kids like, you know, if you got hurt tomorrow and couldn't play basketball again, would you still want to go to the school that you chose? So you have to, you know, you have to love it. But mm -hmm. being recruited is awesome, right? It's an awesome feeling when people want you, right? Because it's a lot of kids that put in the work and, you know, spend the money to train and spend the money to be on AAU programs, right? And it, it doesn't always work out like it did for you. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about the flip side to that and saying, okay, it's easy to make the call to say, hey, I'm coming to Sacred Heart. What was the phone call like, and what were your nerves like to have to tell Manhattan, I'm not coming there? Yeah. Because somebody's going to be disappointed in this process, right? Yeah, there were, I had to call, I don't remember exactly what colleges it were, it was, if I'm being honest, but I do remember Manhattan. Um, it wasn't easy, but I mean, still, you know, they all still follow me. Yeah. They all still, sometimes, I mean, they're recruiting my younger sister. Okay. So, I saw in my AU tournaments when I went to go watch her and they'd still say hi. You know, they didn't take it personally, obviously, but they were very nice about it. But the nerves, I mean, that's a phone call that, you know, you don't want to have. <laughs> it's its not the funnest thing to go through, right. but I mean, you had to do it, but I was amazed by Manhattan. They were extremely nice about it. Um, they wished me luck, obviously, but my nerves, you know, I was terrified. Right, nah, no yeah. question. So you commit to Sacred Heart after your junior year, and I got to go on record saying Sacred Heart is the first college where I've had a men's basketball player and a women's basketball player on my show. So mm -hmm. I had Zach Rads on earlier this year. Shout out to Zach. I think he's having his senior night tonight. So, mm -hmm. um, but you commit, you got your senior year at Ava Park, and your senior year gets cut short, you know, by this pandemic, right? Like, mm -hmm. so... What was that like? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've been playing for, I mean, it was your fifth year. You played a lot of varsity basketball, but, you know, like, you want to go out the way that you want to go out. You know what I mean? And you didn't get an opportunity to. What was that? What was that feeling like? Do you remember where you were when you got the word that, you know, that basically, you know, the season's going to get cut short? Yeah, that was still probably one of the worst moments of my life. Mm -hmm. Um I remember the exact moment, and I could tell you my entire team could remember the exact moment. We were in practice. You know, we won sectionals. We were going – We that, that was – I'm still calling it we could have won states that year. Okay. We were going on the road. So, okay. you know, we were in practice. My coach kind of got word. At first, he pulled us in, and he was like, you know, no spectators. There's this thing called COVID going around. You know, it's pretty serious. So we're still going to play, but no spectators. So that was before practice started. So we're like, okay, you know, obviously it kind of sucked, but we're like, all right, we're still playing. 30 minutes into practice, our athletic trainer comes in and he has tears in his eyes. Mm. And I look at him and um, I throw the F-bomb out there. Ooh. And I literally just bend over and just start bawling. Yeah. I'm like, this is not happening to me, not right now, not after I gave five years of my life to this school. Yeah. The one year I get the opportunity, this is not happening. Yeah. It felt like a dream. It was a literal dream, you know? Everything I worked for my senior year, which I looked forward to since I was in eighth grade, got cut short. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, everyone said, this is serious. Yeah. You know, we, we didn't know how serious it was at that time. So 
you know, it hurt, but we, I understand now, but it was, it was gut-wrenching. It was awful. Now I could, I could, I listen, I can only imagine, you know, I, I could never imagine the time when I played in, in high school of there not being a season or like, you know, my season being in jeopardy. So it's, it's new for everybody, man. And even like this year, like I'm sure, you know, your sister had to go through and like, we're not going to play this year. Like, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's a lot, man. There's so many guidelines going out there and so many, you know, so I know they're getting a chance to play a little bit now and I know she's doing okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we graduated from high school and, you know, now it's time to go on to the next level, right? We got to, like you said, you learn how to push through this year, right? So mm -hmm. I had to get over not perhaps winning the state championship and never knowing if we would have won that state state championship or not. But now I got to I got to go handle business on this next level now. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest adjustment that you had to make of being a high school athlete to now quote unquote starting over right and being a freshman on a in a collegiate program talk about the jump from high school to to collegiate athletics it's a pretty big jump i'm not gonna lie um it takes a lot out of you mm -hmm. um you know high school it was more fun you know you hung out with friends on a team you know hung out with people who didn't care about basketball as much it wasn't always like basketball 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 right but the jump from high school to college was, it was pretty big for me, especially in this time, because mm -hmm. things were just so uncertain. You know, we would, we started out the season in pods. So we had half the team in one pod, half the team in the other pod, which was weird. And then we started lift and then we went into practice. But I mean, the days are full, you know, we go from lift, an hour lift to a three hour practice to study hall. We still have classes. I mean, it's like an 8 a.m. to like an 8 p.m. day. It's it's not easy nope. um, at all. It takes a lot out of you, but it's it's a big adjustment. It really is. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I love it. If you love basketball, you'll love it too, you know. It's 100% right. worth it. When I look back when I'm older, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be thankful that I went through it. I mean, it teaches you a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons. So I take those away and kind of grow from them and go from there. Right. Now – is Sacred Heart, are you are your classes in person as usual or are you guys online? So we're hybrid. So it's like half and half. So you go in one day and then you're online the next day. Okay. And and you just alternate by day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So so that's another thing, right? So it's already kind of difficult, right? Like, okay, I'm a freshman on the team, right? Like the preseason, right? The preseason itself is like, holy cow, like, you know what I mean? Like you kind of think you're in shape. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I know when I went to college, I'm like, I used to be able to run all day when I was in high school. And now all of a sudden, it's like a, a button got turned off. And now I got to learn how to get in shape every single, single year. So talk about the preseason if you can, because, right, like, and then, like, not just going into a preseason, but you're going into a preseason with this COVID thing. So you had, I'm sure you had to get tested like crazy. So talk about that experience going into, you know, going into your um, freshman year. Yeah. So, I mean, preseason, we would still lift. We would still have, like, morning lifts. And then, once again, we were in the pods. So we would have, like, an hour practice. So it wasn't that much, you know. I went in. I worked hard over the summer. You know, I weightlifted. I ran. I did everything the book told me to do. Mm -hmm. But nothing compares to when you're actually here. And actually, like, you can, you can do as much as you want, but yeah. it's very hard to prepare. So, I mean, going from, like, lift to the hour practice, it wasn't bad in the beginning. I was like, all right, I can do this. Like, hour lift, hour practice. Like, yeah, I'm exhausted after, but it's whatever. And then, boom, season hits, hour lift, three-hour practice. It's it's a lot. Even, like, preseason, I was like, all right, I'm in shape. Like, I'm fine. The first practice, the first three-hour practice, I mean, it hits you. It hits you hard. But you get used to it. You know, now three-hour practices go by like that for me. I used right. to think it was – long as heck like I've never been through a thorough practice for my life right. but I mean you adjust to it your body gets used to it um you do get into better shape but there's really I mean you can prepare but once you're here nothing compares to it absolutely yeah so so now right now the games are starting right I want you to take me through your first game like how nervous were you and 
you know what I mean? Like, what were you mm -hmm. like? What were you thinking about, man? Like, just just talk to me about it. Cause I I know how I felt my first game, but like, so so tell me how about the nerves of your first college game? I was terrified. <laughs> I was absolutely terrified. I played LA Brooklyn my first game. Okay. It was away, so I played in their gym. Okay. Um, I was shaking. You know, I didn't know at that time if I was going to get playing time. You know, it was the first game I had two other posts in front of me. One's a senior, one's a sophomore, both older. So I didn't know if I was going to get in at all. I really had no idea. Right. Um, so I got in at one point, and I was shaking. I was scared. But right. it's kind of just like you're on the court, and, like, the adrenaline's pumping, and, like, you're actually playing. Like, yeah, the first minute, two minutes, I was scared. Mm -hmm. I wasn't myself. Like, I was kind of stiff. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But after that, you know, I – came back out and then I went back in and I was fine. I just finally like, like I scored six points my first college game, which I'm personally right. proud of. Right. Um, so I, I got used to it pretty quick, but I mean, I was classic freshman moment. I was terrified. No, like, absolutely terrified. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you be, why wouldn't yeah. you be? And so talk about the speed of the game, right? Talk about the speed of the game between high school and college as well. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely faster. Um, for me being a post, it's, a lot more physical um i play big girls you know i get beaten up 24 7 in a game you know in the post you're just battling all the time elbows it takes a lot out of you but it's definitely way more physical than i was used to in high school you know i was used to being the big person on the court you know i was one of the tallest ones i was like a power forward here i'm not small but i'm also not six four like some other girls are so it's definitely more physical it took some time to get used to. I'm still getting used to it. Um, but I would say even the speed of it just for me is faster, but the physicality just like personally for a post is way more physical. Nah, nah, it definitely is. So, I mean, but you found your, you found your foot in like rookie of the week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we averaging about eight and seven, like we almost had that, that double, double status already. So you already mm -hmm. up in there doing doing what you do so you've adjusted very you know you've adjusted very very well like I said you know like you have control over your effort you have control over that and that kind of gives you the opportunity right to to get comfortable right because you're not worried about whether or not your shot is falling or you know coming down the court and setting up the offense you know what I mean like I can just kind of come in and just do what I've always done all of my life and get comfortable mm -hmm. that way. I can get points on putbacks and whatever the case may be. And yeah. so again, like those are one of those things, like you're a child, you know, you're a kid who doesn't need the ball to affect the game, which is, which is a great attribute. You know what I mean? That's yeah. something that I've, that's something that I've learned. You know what I'm saying? When I was playing too, like, you know, cause everybody doesn't like the, everybody, a lot of kids want the ball. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like, yeah. but like, yeah, everybody wants the ball. So you have to learn how to do other things. So again, you know, kudos to you for making the, you know, making the adjustment and, and doing what you do. And, and how did you feel when you got Rookie of the Week? I was shocked. I mean, I was really shocked. Um, it took me a couple games to kind of break out of my show. Mm -hmm. um, but when my coaches told me, I was kind of like taken back, okay. you know, because it's like, it's different because in high school, you know, I'm used to scoring 15 plus points, mm -hmm. you know, getting a double-double. Here at college, obviously, it's not as easy. Right. So, you know, I was excited when I got Rookie of the Week twice. Obviously, my, my yeah. hard work is finally paying off yeah. and, like, finally being recognized for it. But it was kind of just like a shock, kind of like a surreal moment for me. You know, like, I made it here. I'm making an impact for my team, which is what I really wanted to do. So it was kind of – it was a relief, you know, kind of showed that, you know, I made it. So right. it was nice. Nah, no doubt about it. Yeah. So, again, you know, as a student athlete person, I couldn't get through this without asking you to take me, right? Because, like I said, right, it's glitz and glamour. Like, yo, you're a Division One basketball player. Like, oh, free sneakers, this and that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you doing it. But we talked about three-hour practices and everything and study hall and that. Take me through a typical day for Kelsey Wood from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed. Because a lot of kids think that they want this, but it's a lot of work that goes into this. Take me through that. 
So I'll give you my busiest day I okay. had. So I went a full block class, 8 a.m. to 10.45. I had practice 11 to 2. I had class. So I had to practice like 15 minutes early. Sprint to my class to get there for an in-person class. So the class went from 2 to 3.30, 3.45. I would have lift, and then I would have study hall right after that. So study hall ended around, like, it depended on the day. It was, like, you know, around 7.30, 8. Go back to my dorm, do about two, three hours worth of homework to, like, 11, 12. Go to bed. Wake up the next day, 8 a.m. for lift. Do it all class over. right after lift. Practice. Class. Study hall. Right. Homework. It was close to a probably 10 hour day, 12 hour day, nonstop going. Nonstop, nonstop. So two things stuck out to me in what you just said. I, I didn't hear you say anything about when you ate. That's number, that's number one, I didn't hear you know what I'm saying. And so, you know what I mean? Like I didn't hear nothing, like is this girl not eating at college? <laughs> um, and so, and then the other thing was, so in high school, right, like, Honestly, like you were a good student in high school, but how much effort did you put into that when you were in high school? Did have you always been the person like yo? I studied so much even when I was in high school because some kids was like, listen, I got good grades in high school, it wasn't that big deal. But now I literally have to study. I was talking to Cat Almeida, and Cat was like, I I, ha I have to actually study now. Like, so what's the difference even in academics between high school and college? A huge difference. I mean, high school. Honestly, I didn't know how to study until I got to college. Mm -hmm. I did not know the techniques how to study. I did not, you know, high school, not that it's like breeze. Like I actually worked hard for my grades because I got really good grades in high school. But I mean, nothing can compare to college work. Absolutely nothing. I mean, we have papers, we have huge exams, quizzes every day. It's just it's the workload. You won't understand until you actually do college work. Right. Um. I mean, it takes a lot out of you. You spend probably, I mean, at least me, I spend probably like three to four hours just writing one paper because it has to be perfect. You can't, you know, make mistakes like you did in high school because they won't give you any slack. There's, you cannot slack off in college. Right. No question about it. So now you travel on the way to an away game at night. So do you get to skip class the next day? Do you get extensions on your work but just because you went to an away game? Or what, what is that like, right? Because you, as, a, as an athlete, you got to have the hookup, right? So mm -hmm. tell me, talk about that. What happens when you go to an away game and you still got that 8 o'clock class the next day? Are you expected to be there? It's funny because that just happened to me. We traveled to Pennsylvania, which is a six-and-a-half-hour bus ride. Mm -hmm. So we came back. I have an 8 a.m. yesterday. So we came back at 2 a.m. I got back to my dorm room. I had to wake up my 8 a.m. the next day. Damn right. There's no excuses. You know, mm -hmm. professors will not let you skip it just because, you know, you got home late. They don't care. You have to be there. And if you're not there, they take attendance. And they will notify your coaches. You will get in trouble. Yeah, there's none of that. <laughs> mm -mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So as we get ready to wrap up, um, I want to ask you some some quick, I call them quick hitter questions, mm -hmm. okay? So, what is Kelsey Wood's favorite movie? Blindside. Blindside, nice, nice, Blindside. Do you have a pregame, right? Like, what's the pregame song that's going to get you hype? Like, oh, man. That's a tough one. Okay. It varies week to week. Okay. Yeah. It has it's, to be upbeat, but okay. it really, it does vary. It kind of depends on the mood I'm in. On the mood. Okay. Yeah. Is it the same? Is it the same? Is it always the same genre of music or is it all over the place? No, it's more like pop rap, kind of okay. just like the upbeat, like fast. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's Kelsey Wood's favorite snack? Ooh. I've gotten actually used to eating a lot of pineapple because we have that in our um, pregame refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So I would say my go-to right now is actually pineapple. It's pineapple, pineapple, okay. When you get the opportunity, what are you binge watching? Oh, God. <laughs> a lot. I finish so many shows. It's insane because we've been in quarantine a lot. So I binge watch. But right Give me now, a couple. Give me girl. a couple. 
Give me a couple of your favorites. New Girl, Friends. Okay. I have watched Friends like three times. Um, the new show Bridgerton. I don't know if you heard of that. No, I have. If my wife is watching, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, man! Like, I finished yeah. that in two days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say those are my top three. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got you. Mm -hmm. If you were having dinner. You can invite five dinner guests, dead or alive, anybody. Who would they be? <sighs> right now, mm -hmm. one would be my mom, because I haven't seen her in a while. Okay. Two would be, God, dead or alive. Kobe. Kobe. Okay. Three would be, actually two, three and, mm, I do two. Both of my high school coaches, Coach Oregon, Coach Keegan. Okay. And then probably hmm. – man, I don't know my fifth one. <laughs> this is hard. It is. No, it is. It's a very difficult question to come up with just like that. It really is. Honestly, I really want to meet um, – I'll probably say Brianna Stewart. I've always That's wanted good. to meet her. Okay. Okay. Going to would be pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So hypothetically, I don't have a daughter, but if mm -hmm. I did, what would be your advice to my daughter who wants to play basketball? Don't give up. You'll go through a lot of hardships. A lot of hardships. Um, I mean, it's a mental, it's a physical game. The biggest thing is just don't give up. No matter what happens to you, keep pushing. If you really love it, you'll go for it, and you can make it if you work as hard as you can. Um, that's the advice I really give to any young players that ask me because I've had people come up to me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what was your journey like? Mm -hmm. It's it is not easy. It's not something you can just, you know, go through without working hard for it. So definitely the top thing is just work as hard as you can. Have fun with it. You know, you don't always have to take it 100% serious. You have to have fun. But, yeah, I would say that. Nah, no question about it. And, you know, I'm sorry we offended some people with the dinner question. I know. You're, <laughs> you're going to have to answer that later. I apologize to get you in trouble like that. <laughs> um, so last question that, you know, I ask all of my guests. When it's all said and done, mm -hmm. um, Kelsey Wood has played her last basketball game, whether it's at Sacred Heart, whether it's, um, you know, overseas, how does Kelsey Wood want to be remembered? Um, I want to be remembered as probably the most hardworking, the one with the most heart. Um, you know, to me, basketball is a heartful game. You have to have heart to play it. Mm -hmm. um, it. It takes a lot, like I've said, but if you have heart, you're going far in life. And that's really all I care about. Um, you know, being kind to everybody. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what kind of struggles they're going through. So I'm kind of just like the kind, heartful person to go to. So I hope I'm memorable as that. Very well, very well said, very well said. Listen, I appreciate you taking time out that busy schedule. Um, I don't want to be the one that holds you back tonight from getting something to eat. <laughs> but, thank, <laughs> but thank you so much for coming up here and, and, and spending time with me and catching up and catching up with me. I, I'm proud of you. That's, a, that's the best that I can say. I'm proud of how far you've come, how much you've grown into the young woman that you've grown. Keep doing what you're doing. I am watching from a distance and will continue to watch you. Keep doing your thing and thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank All you. Right, you got it.